sacrifice there and the shed blood of the perfect, spotless, sinless Son of God, the Lamb of God, atones for our sins. And so that's why John 20, verse 17, in your King James, page 105 in your book, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. Now let's look at what the modern translations say. NIV, Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. NIV, Jesus allows Mary to touch him. He just, she just can't hold on to him. New King James, Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. New Living Translation, Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. I mean, this is something, uh, again, goes back to our point about Bible believer. If I'm a Bible believer, and I understand Hebrews 9, as a translator, I would never say that Jesus said, do not hold on to me. Because I would know that the sacrifice of Jesus would be marred by Mary just touching him. Uh, so again, this is a major deal. You say, what's the big deal? Touch versus cling. Well, if you know your Bible, you know the doctrine there, you know that it's a big deal. Uh, the next thing, in your NIV and the NLT, they show Jesus Christ as nobody special. Uh, Acts 2.30, which we read uh, in Lesson 5a, it's in page 107. In your King James, it says, Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. So this here is saying that the Messiah is Christ. He would be of David's loins according to the flesh. The NIV says, But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. It's not the Christ or Christ or according to the flesh. It's just you know, one of David's descendants. You know, Maybe it's Solomon. Maybe it's uh, Manasseh. Maybe, you know, who knows who it is? It's one of his descendants. New King James Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. Um, NLT, but he was a prophet, and he knew God had promised with an oath that one of David's own descendants would sit on his throne. And then if you go to Romans 1.3, you will see the same, the same error, doctrinal error, in Romans 1.3, which is page... 122 in the Bible Perversions book. Romans 1.3, King James, Concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. NIV says regarding his son, who as to his earthly life was a descendant of David. It doesn't identify his son as Jesus Christ our Lord. And it doesn't say that he is according, made according to the flesh. He's just a descendant of David. And the same thing in the New Living Translation. The good news is about his son. Who is his son? Well, we don't know. In his earthly life, he was born into King David's family line. So again, not according to the flesh and not shown as Jesus Christ our Lord. This is significant if you look at Revelation 13. Satan is the great imitator of God. Jesus, or I should say God, had Jesus die, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. Satan, being the imitator of God, does his own version of, Jesus, of the Christ. The beast is killed by the two witnesses at the end of three and a half years within uh, into the tribulation period. And so then he probably, although we're not told, he probably, the Antichrist probably lies in the grave for three days. And then Satan raises him from the dead, not as a man, but as a beast. Revelation 13, 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, 
and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. You notice in verse 3 it says, I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. That's where he had, he had been killed by the two witnesses with a head to the, uh, head to the wound. A wound to the head, and he was killed and was um, buried, and he probably laid in the grave there for three days, and then the beast raises him up and shows the deadly wound to the head. And so the whole world wonders after him. They say, wow, he rose from the dead. He must be the Christ. He must be the Messiah. According to your King James in Romans 1.3, God's Son is Jesus Christ our Lord, made of the seed of David according to the flesh. According to the NIV, God's Son is not named. He is not according to the flesh. And the same thing with the New Living Translation. So if you're reading an NIV or an NLT, and you see this resurrection from the dead by Satan of the Antichrist, you can declare, this is the Christ. His name isn't Jesus, but his name Jesus is in Romans 1.3. Uh, so again... Jesus Christ being nobody special, any descendant of David could be the Messiah, and he could be a spiritual one, since he's not according to the flesh, or maybe he's a beast. So the Antichrist could be the Christ, the Messiah, if you've got an NIV or an NLT. Um, Acts 3, verse 13, in all your modern translations, Jesus was not God's Son. Uh, the son there is changed to servant. Acts 3, verse 26. This is page 109 in the Bible Perversions book. Page 109. Acts 3, verse... Um, uh, let's start of that page 108. Acts 3, 13. Because it's in two verses. Uh, King James says, The God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob the God of our fathers, hath glorified his Son, Jesus. NIV says, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant, Jesus. New King James, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant, Jesus. New Living, for it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of all our ancestors, who has brought glory to his servant, Jesus. And then in Acts 3.26, and the King James, Unto you first God, having raised up his Son, Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. NIV, when God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. Jesus is taken out of there, um, and the Son is taken away. So we don't even know who he is. Who's the servant? You know, maybe it's the Antichrist. NLT, when God raised up his servant Jesus, he sent him first to you people of Israel. New King James, to you first God, having raised up his servant Jesus. So, in all the modern translations, son Jesus changed to servant Jesus, and in one case, Jesus completely taken out. So, Jesus is not God's son. In these, all these modern translations. Um, we're going to stop there for this message. The next point has got a lot of verses and it's another very, they're all critical points or else we wouldn't bring them up, but um, we'll stop there for this time and then we'll pick up there next time. Let's close in a word of prayer. Uh, dear Lord, we thank you that you have preserved your word for us today in the King James Bible. If you did not do that, we would be subject to all these false doctrines, errors. We wouldn't know to how, how to have eternal life, how to be saved. We wouldn't know the great things about your son. We wouldn't know about you as God. We would think Satan is God. We would think the Antichrist is God. And just all these perversions that we see in the modern translations. And we thank you that you have kept us from that by giving us your preserved word today in, in English in the King James Version. And that you've given us your Holy Spirit to teach us the sound doctrine to discern between perverted and versions and the pure version. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.
Okay, thanks for joining us. Next time we'll continue with all the things that these modern versions do to Jesus.